Okay, hello everyone. So we're going to be slightly ahead of schedule on this presentation, but I hope that's okay. Uh, um, by this time, I'm assuming you would have uh, looked at the folders, the contents of the folders, and we have put these worksheets and uh, a Python notebook, which has some ORT data uh, algorithms to say how you would go about analyzing ORT data. I'll give a brief, I thought I'll give a brief introduction to these uh, worksheets and the uh, data analysis, uh, which will give sort of a broader context for you to understand what we are trying to do here. Uh, because the worksheets themselves uh, may be a bit short on the introduction part. So uh, the module one is going to be on what I've titled as antenna feed electromagnetics. I'll start with the motivation of why I thought about uh, presenting this uh, as, a, as a worksheet. So the initial motivation was uh, for me to understand how exactly, how to fundamentally understand how an antenna works, that is how it detects electromagnetic radiation. So uh, you, you must have got the idea by now that uh, a radio telescope, it's not exactly like uh, the other cameras that we use to detect photons in the optical or even in the high energy. It works slightly differently. And although everybody has some idea of how it works, you know, a general uh, picture they have in their mind where a changing electric field is what is incident on a piece of metal, a wire, let's say, uh, and it moves the free electrons and that produces current. That's the general description and it's accurate enough or good enough qualitatively. Here is a GIF that is on Wikipedia that illustrates this very well for a short dipole. What you see is here is a short dipole where the currents are flowing. You can see the negatives and positives alternating as the electromagnetic wave propagates and the electric field pushes the electrons one way or the other, depending on the vector, the electric vector. And there is a resistor that connects the two elements of the dipole uh, um, and that completes the circuit. Okay, this is, this is good, but uh, this particular qualitative way of looking at things does not really help one, to help one to design a simple antenna, for instance. Uh, so one needs to go slightly deeper. And if one wants to think about how to actually go about building an antenna with simple components, now, th this is the motivation part where I was thinking, let's say I do have to design an antenna, how would I go about it? Like what all the other things that I would, I would need to learn about to go about doing that? I mean, a theory can take you quite far, even though it's no substitution for actually tinkering with stuff and doing it hands-on. Uh, the other motivation is, I mean, I was thinking how, uh, for instance, it's quite a bit uh, popular nowadays is uh, in, in pop culture media, if you see, there's always a post-apocalyptic world. And I was wondering if we were in such a world, like how would you go about improvising a antenna? I mean, you would have to know it in quite a bit of detail for you to improvise it and, and ma make an actual functioning antenna for your purposes. So this, these were the general motivation. But uh, I mean, I'm sorry to say, I don't have the complete answer yet, but I have a few steps like we can take, you can see how deep we can go with some of the basic principles that we know and the mathematical techniques we can apply and see. So uh, I tried to come up with a few set of prerequisites for it. I know, um, I, I mean, I'm not too aware of uh, uh, the different uh, syllabus uh, in different universities all around the country. Um, I mean, most of you are from a bachelor's degree, but uh, I'm assuming you have done some amount of uh, electrodynamics. Uh, so these are sort of what is required in electrodynamics. You, it would be good if you, I mean, it would really make sense only if you know Maxwell's equations well, uh, the wave solution, the scalar and vector potential description of how to uh, describe ele electric and magnetic fields and the retarded solutions. These are some of the prerequisites. Basic circuit theory, like knowing how to calculate electric power, uh, knowing what the circuit elements are, knowing what impedance is, 
like uh, the combination of resistance and reactance. You know these things, uh, or even for this case, at least for the circuit theory part, you can just look at basic definitions on Wikipedia or some online resource, and that should be good enough. We won't go too much into detail uh, with these things. Uh, and about black body radiation, thermodynamic equilibrium, I'm assuming all of you would have some idea about, like have encountered it in your coursework or even in lectures like these, like it was discussed even in the past two days. Uh, there might be other prerequisites I haven't considered really, but what I would like is eventually you guys to give me feedback as to uh, what, what would be nice little modules to add that would uh, help with the gap between what you already know and to solve the worksheets that I'm about to show you. Okay, so we'll right, uh, jump right into it. Uh, we'll look at uh, uh, other antenna feed. Now, antenna feed is essentially the, the set of uh, elements in a telescope, which converts the, uh, with, which acts based on the electric field that is incident on it and produces a current. So we go with the most simplest setup, which is a dipole antenna. You have two linear elements. If you see, there's a schematic that is drawn on the right side. Uh, there are two, uh, uh, two sort of elements, one uh, oriented up and one oriented down, and they're connected through a electrical load. And this is pretty much it. I mean, this is the simplest form. And if you look at an actual picture of a Dipole, uh, dipole antenna feed, uh, you'll see that it looks pretty much like the schematic that I've shown. There's not much more to it. So uh, first thing you would uh, work over there is trying to see if for a given electric field that is incident on an antenna field, what is the current excitation that happens in the circuit? Now this seemed like a simple basic question to ask and that is why I started looking, at, looking for a solution but it's apparently it's not an easy solution to come by. Like it's searching online, I had to actually go to a lot of engineering books where they talk in detail about antenna theory for me to get, get close to a solution. It's still not complete as you'll see. So what we are trying to do is solve the simplest problem and a, a plane wave is incident uh, on this dipole and uh, because it's a plane wave from a very distant source, the electric field that is uh, that you can measure at all the points on this linear dipole will be a cons will be the same for at a particular instant of time, and uh, we'll see what is the current that will be uh, generated due to this. Now, this is called the antenna boundary value problem, where you solve the Maxwell's equations within the antenna element, uh, and you you apply the boundary conditions of the antenna and get a solution. It sounds straightforward. So uh, I'll just go over the, the basic steps. I mean, eventually when you, uh, the whole point of those worksheets is that you'll, you'll have more time to work on it and probably get a better idea of what exactly is going on rather than listening to me speak about the overview. But I'll just give a, uh, briefly describe the steps that you will take to get to the equation that governs the solution, not the solution itself. Okay, the first part is to realize that uh, it's a metallic uh, kind of metallic sensing element, which means if you choose a good conductor, the surface, uh, the electric fields of the surface need to be canceled. So as the incident electric, uh, for an incident electric field, the, there would be currents that would produce an electric field to cancel the incident electric field. Now, what that means is we have uh, an ele electric field at the surface. We'll know that because we have assumed from the, of the incident radiation. And from that, we use, we'll use uh, these vector potentials. Um, I mean, again, uh, if you have a background, that's great. Otherwise, the worksheets, what it would do is uh, give you the relations as is, you can assume that to be a given. You can, if you have time, you can go back and see how they are derived, or you can take it for granted for now and then apply it and get to the solution. So essentially you can apply something called a Lorentz gauge, uh, which exploits the 
uh, the freedom that we have in defining potentials for the electric and magnetic fields. And this allows us to express the, any electric field in terms of vector potentials alone. So what we'll have is a differential equation of the vector potential, which we'll solve. And then there comes the uh, in uh, solution of the inhomogeneous wave equation uh, for Maxwell's equations, which connects the vector potential to currents. And that is the expression over here. Uh, many of you who raised the hand uh, uh, about satisfying the prerequisite would uh, immediately recognize it. And once you equate these two, the, the vector potential that you've uh, obtained from the incident uh, electric field and the vector potential due to, uh, or this general wave equation solution, you'll have an integral equation that you need to solve to get the current in the antenna. Uh, I mean, this is how far the worksheet will take you. To actually solve it and apply the boundary condition, it's, it's a, it turns out to be a lot more complicated. Uh, you'll have to convert these into algebraic equations and get an approximation, so, uh, approximate solution at best. Now, this is something in the next session I'll try to go over a bit, uh, but um, you, you're not expected to actually find a solution. I mean, if you are really adventurous, which you should be, maybe later after the winter school is over, I'll give you the references. You can go about on a weekend, sit and try to solve this. It should be worthwhile. Yeah, so the general suggestions, I mean, this is just the first section. This is the hardest part. So if you did not understand all the stuff I said in the previous slide, do not worry too much about it. The rest of the uh, uh, the worksheets that we're gonna work on are, are not nearly this difficult. It's much more straightforward. And it does not uh, require you to uh, know a lot of this uh, detailed electromagnetics. Okay, uh, but in any case, I've tried to design the worksheet so that either you know the background so that uh, you're convinced of a particular expression that is given uh, that I've said, just take for granted, or you just trust it and you take it granted for now and go through the derivations. Or there's a compromise where you, you go through the derivation and later you go back at some point, I mean, in the future, like after the school, you go back and try to work out the results that you took for granted, derive them again. Okay, so we have gotten over the hard part actually. Now, it uh, hopefully it would be a, a lot more um, uh, accessible, whatever I'm going to explain. Okay. Now, so I've, I've sort of explained you right now, what I wanted to just uh, uh, Remember is that what we have just done is essentially find out the equation which defines what current will be produced for an incident electromagnetic field. Now, uh, we saw the uh, antenna feed. It has these sensing elements. Now we know what current is generated, not exactly what current is generated, but we know how to get to it. Now, once the current is generated, what happens in the antenna is because the currents are varying with time, it's, the charges are getting accelerated, the currents themselves will radiate back into, the, into space, which leads to something called radiation resistance. This happens for both uh, receiving and transmitting antennas. Transmitting antennas will have a, oscillator, uh, a voltage oscillator which will uh, move the charges in, the, in a feed and this will radiate. Um, and uh, the receiving antennas, essentially, the elect incident electric fields will produce the current that causes acceleration of charges. And the acceleration of charges, again, uh, lead to radiation. That is radiation resistance. Now, you're we are back to the simple schematic. And uh, in general, if you see this in terms of a circuit, the antenna, uh, the antenna element, the dipole, will have resistance uh, both of uh, both loss resistance and radiation resistance, and a bit of react uh, reactance in, in general. But it so happens that, uh, I mean, do, the loss resistance is something due to, um, you know, uh, the material itself, and this will be something that depends on how it's designed, and it will stay constant 
once the design is done. Now, we'll assume for most cases that it's uh, lossless. Uh, we have some sort of material where the loss is so minimal, we can ignore it. The loss resistance, that is just the opposition of opposition in the material to motion of electrons. And if you choose short enough dipoles, it so happens that the reactance itself uh, can be neglected. It will be a purely resistive antenna. That is, when I say short dipoles, what I mean is the length of the, the linear antenna that we have is smaller than or much smaller than the wavelength we are interested in measuring. The resonant dipole uh, with lambda by two length uh, is the one that is uh, purely resistive. Um, oh, okay. Uh, the short dipole can be thought of as uh, the the one that gives pure resistive uh, uh, resistance. I mean impedance, uh, but parts of it are missing, like the ends, right, uh, which you have uh, cut off to make a short dipole. And that can be imagined to be uh, adding to extra capacitance on top of uh, what you would have as a pure resistive uh, uh, impedance uh, when you have a resonant dipole of uh, half wavelength. And uh, you will have, uh, so when you use any element which is a uh, linear element which is uh, uh, smaller than lambda by two you will uh, have unavoidable capacitive uh, part to the impedance of the antenna so how does one go about uh, calculating radiation resistance of an antenna uh, we have to first um, calculate the energy loss due to acceleration of these charges uh, I mean, it's fairly as simple as that. We know that accelerated charges radiate and we have to do it for a bunch of charges because we know the current that is there. So the step one would be to determine the transverse electric field due to, to the current distribution that we have assumed. Now, the, I told you how to go about uh, calculating the actual currents. It's uh, It so happens for many applications uh, or you know, uh, trying to understand qualitatively what's happening, we can always uh, make these approximations that are good enough for our purposes. For for getting to these expressions, for understanding the concepts, may not be for actually designing an actual antenna. But uh, it it so happens a, a good approximation for a short dipole where the um, wavelength of interest is larger than the linear extent of the antenna. It can be either uh, approximated by a cosinusoid, co where it goes to zero at the edges and maximum towards the center. Or you can even have for very short dipoles, uh, almost a linear uh, distribution, where it again goes to zero at the edges and it's maximum at the center. Uh, this is, for instance, one of the expressions where H is the total size and h by two is the size of each element. And uh, you can start with a current distribution, assume a current distribution of this sort. And then you have, uh, you, you know, uh, okay, most of you would know what is the electric field that is generated, uh, transverse electric field generated by an accelerating charge particle, a single charge particle. All you have to do is generalize this for the electric, uh, for the current distribution that we have. If you don't know some of these expressions, you know, it is already given. So all you have, would have to do is to some, take some of the mathematical steps like integrating or differentiating and getting to the solution. Hopefully it does still is useful in some way to the people who are not familiar with uh, many of the prerequisites. Well, it, it's, I mean, it's sort of experimental pedagogical technique. You'll see how it pans out. Now, the next thing we'll do now, what we have is we have the electric field uh, due to the current distribution now. Now, from there, we can calculate the pointing flux uh, due to the propagating electric field. The pointing vector, as defined here, gives the power that uh, 
that is tra- uh, that is being emitted due to um, accelerating charge particle or any any distribution that is radiating and one can take a time average of it and one gets the power emitted or a- time average power emitted because it's a uh, it's a cyclical uh, change in change in current that's why we are doing this t- a time average and finally all we have to do is we so we have the total power that is being emitted and what we can do in terms of circuit we can define a radiation resistance in calculate the you know i square r sort of uh, loss due to a resistance you have to e- just equate these two once we equate it we'll get the radiation resistance now what we have so we have two elements that we have taken care of in the feet we have um, the the current distribution and now we know what sort of resistance it has um the reactance is again somewhat uh, involved calculation if one needs to uh, take reactance into account uh, in the antenna but we can always make this assumption that we are working in a limit where only the resistance dominates and the reactance is uh, not that important now the third part, third and final part of that first worksheet would be uh, how to extract maximum power out of the electrical load that we have um, we have in the antenna feed so again uh, you see the schematic over here uh, we have this dipole we know how the what current is or we sort of know what current is going to be generated what is the radiation resistance that piece of element has and the power uh, or, or there is a load impedance the load that we connect is sort of our design and we know what load is going to be connected over there and what impedance it will have now this can be converted to a equivalent electrical circuit i think there's something called the thevenin's theorem which allows you to do that so what you see on the left the schematic of the dipole feed while it's generating its current and has this potential difference across the load uh, load impedance it is exactly equal electrically to the circuit equivalent circuit that we have on the right we have za as the antenna impedance which has a resistance part and a reactance part the voltage va is essentially comes from the electric field that is generated which moves the electrons there the current is what we saw ia and we have this load impedance and all you have to do is solve this um so first you'll have to write down the power that is received by the load that is where we are making the measurements and receiving power then um what we'll do is we'll expand the impedance we'll assume we know the we know reactance values and resistance values so we can write any impedance in terms of reactance plus an imaginary part uh, of reactance resistance plus imaginary reactance and it will essentially be a, a algebraic equation where you have to try to maximize the power output so this will give you conditions on what sort of load uh, load impedance you can choose so that you can get maximum power output this would pretty much require just uh, some calculus of variations nothing more than that so so this is supposed to give a you know a, still a very rough idea of how exactly uh, radiation that is incident on a antenna feed gets converted to a uh, current what are for the circuit elements we need to consider for us to uh, get power out of it and how to maximize that power eventually when you go through the worksheet worksheets you would have gotten to the equation that governs the current excitation in our antenna you would have found out how to calculate radiation resistance for a given electrical uh, sorry electrical current right and then how to do impedance matching that is the technique that's called um, that's what it's called for maximum power transfer to the electric load 